All right, uh, everybody, we are live on Instagram. We are live on uh, YouTube. YouTube, we are just going to uh, listen to this uh, music for a touch longer. Give us a little something to do. Uh, let me know how the sound is over on YouTube. It's good to see everybody on Instagram. Instagram can't see me now. That's nice. I am wearing my uh, classy bartender getup. Okay, we'll just switch on over over here to well give it a second uh, over on Instagram we are uh, hanging out everybody can hear me over on Instagram thumbs up thumbs up I don't hear Kyle yet Kyle hasn't come in to let me know that everything is wrong so it's good news all right you two uh, hey guys everybody uh, it's good to see everybody. So nice. Uh, appreciate uh, all of the calls this week. Uh, we had a, a bit of a death in the family. We uh, lost our, our cat this week. The cat that we uh, loved more than anything. Uh, she, uh, We threw her a catsiniera. Uh, we missed her birthday by a year. It was actually a sweet 16. We should have been throwing her. Uh, but we did lose her this week. So... Uh, if you have a cat, or I guess a dog, I'm not really a dog person, uh, but if you do have a dog or a cat, give them a big old hug for us today, me and Jen and Kyle. Kyle loved that cat too, uh, little Gizma. So, I uh, don't mean to start off on a negative note, but I do want to uh, send that out into the universe that maybe uh, there are uh, people that maybe haven't uh, squeezed a cat recently. It is the greatest. Uh, today... We are doing some cocktails. Why not? Uh, why not? We have a bunch uh, of cocktails. Uh, three. I suppose three counts as a bunch. Uh, imagine three carrots is like a bunch of carrots. Uh, what else comes in bunches? We're not. We don't have to play this game. Uh, we are going to be making uh, some Joe Shalom cocktails. Now, it's uh, weird uh, how that's pronounced and spelled. S-C-I-A-L-O-M. Shalom. Joe Shalom, he was the world's greatest bartender for many, many years, uh, and then died in obscurity in 2004, just sort of uh, kicked off this mortal plane. Uh, let me just sign in here so I can see everybody's comments real quick. There we go. Two little momentitos. Oh, I don't need to go there. I need to go here. Perfect. Beautiful. Uh, so we're going to be doing Joe Shalom cocktails today. Jo uh, Joe Shalom. Joe Shalom, a very famous bartender, uh, was uh, exiled from two different places. Two different places. Imagine being exiled from one place where they literally uh, pick you up and tell you to get on out. Go, you dork. They would say to you, they would say, get on out of here, you dork. Uh, he was kicked out of a place called Egypt. He was kicked out of a place called Cuba out of both of those spots uh, just real quick over on YouTube how is the underlying music is it too much is it too little I don't know somebody will tell me Keith's in there uh, in that chat I see uh, Apostle Tiki over on the Instagram hey 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 there's Kyle Kyle back in town uh, okay uh, so Joe Shalom uh, was a, a North Egyptian Jew uh, that uh, was a studier of uh, chemistry. Big old chemistry guy. Uh, loved uh, chemistry and uh, studying all of that. Uh, and while he was in school, started making, uh, mixing different tinctures and tonics together uh, to uh, impress his friends. And boy, uh, were his friends uh, impressed. Uh, so at the age of 18, uh, decided, oh, thank you, Kyle, uh, decided to uh, become a bartender. Decided to run away and join the working class. Like uh, so many of us uh, who went to college uh, and could not find else, uh, could not find anything else that we wanted to do. Uh, and it turns out we really like bartending. That's one of the great things about Joe Shalom. He uh, was a dude that uh, 
really did the right stuff. He really did the right stuff. He uh, didn't chase the dollar, the almighty dollar, although he did become very rich uh, at a number of times in his life, uh, but he did chase what he uh, loved. So uh, we're going to be making uh, three of his cocktails. Now, I, uh, in this, in a tiki bar, uh, try to stick as close to tiki cocktails as I can. Uh, Joe Shalom had a lot of non-tiki cocktails. Uh, he had the M1, which is uh, sort of a tiki cocktail, I suppose. Uh, the uh, He had a lot of them. He had a lot of them. But we're going to be doing three uh, of his tiki cocktails that he created. Uh, two of them uh, he created in the uh, Caribe uh, Hilton, which is owned by uh, Conrad Hilton. Uh, and then uh, the other one, well, the other one was uh, in Rome when he was at... Uh, a hotel in Rome. Uh, he was running the Premier Hotel, the Premier Hilton Hotel in Rome, uh, and was working, uh, one of the notable things, he was working from 10 a.m. until 3 a.m., uh, would come home uh, and famously uh, would not sleep, uh, would get back to uh, work the next day uh, and be a great. Uh, that is probably why uh, he, he looked a little rough. The guy looked a little rough. He had a bit of a rough face. Uh, going. Uh, so we're going to be making uh, three of those cocktails. We're going to start off uh, today uh, at 7.06 uh, right now. Uh, with uh, the first one, we are going to be making a cocktail from his private books. So never published on a menu, uh, never published uh, anywhere else. Uh, just from his private books, a cocktail called the Sol y Sombra, which means the sun and the shade. So the Sol y Sombra. Uh, and we are going to be using... Uh, a bunch of stuff. So get your stuff ready. Uh, we're going to be using uh, some uh, Bacardi Gold. If you have some Bacardi Gold, that will be the time to bring it out. Uh, if you have some uh, Demerara Rum or a dark Jamaican rum, uh, you are in uh, luck. Uh, we're going to be using something uh, like this. This is Apricot Brandy. Get your Apricot Brandy ready. Apricot Liqueur is not the same thing. Uh, so if you have Apricot Liqueur, your SOL, Soli Sombra. Uh, and then we are going to be doing pineapple juice. I have some pineapple juice right here, freshly made. Uh, it is in a uh, ginger ale glass. Uh, that is because I freshly squeeze my pineapple uh, like a uh, dork uh, that should be exiled. They should exile me for that kind of thing. Uh, and then limes. Of course, I forgot to bring in the limes. Uh, if Kyle uh, gets a second, I will need more limes. I have one right here. But if Kyle, my bar back, my lovely, a lovely bar back could bring me more limes at some point, that'd be great. And get your Angostura bitter uh, is ready. Uh, we are going to be shaking this one. So uh, let's get that. Uh, now you do not need a glass for this one. Uh, if you have a pineapple, if you have a pineapple, uh, you should be good on glassware. This is uh, just going to be uh, taken off here. Uh, we're gonna be drinking this one right out of the uh, pineapple. That's how we liked it. So. Uh, if you have time and you have that one pineapple uh, just weirdly growing uh, in your garden, uh, pop on out, chop that thing down, uh, cut it up, twist it out, squeeze the juice, better juice always. Oh, there's Kyle with my uh, stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Kyle sort of underthrowing these guys. I probably need a lemon too if you, uh, if you ever get a chance. Cool. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, Kyle, honestly, if I could recommend uh, to anybody uh, the number one bar tool that you can get, is a bar back. Uh, so uh, do try and find a bar back. Uh, I think they still have them at a barkeeper. I don't know. Let's uh, keep going. Let's keep going. Let's build uh, this cocktail. We're gonna start off with the booze first because uh, that is uh, how I wrote it down. And there is no other reason. Yeah, here we go. Uh, yeah, I'll take one more. Thank you, Kyle. Kyle is the man. Big, handsome, hairy guy really hairy guy he was uh, taking off his uh, his uh, suit the other day boy I don't know how a dude gets that hairy it's weird uh, let's uh, go ahead and grab for our Bacardi uh, I have uh, stopped messing around I now buy all of my Bacardi in the largest bottle that I possibly can uh, these COVID times I uh, don't have time to buy these small bottles anymore I drink this uh, so why would I ever do this oh thanks Kyle Kyle's all flushing over there. Uh, so let's uh, begin over here. Uh, we're going to grab this Bacardi Gold. Uh, if you have it, any other gold Puerto Rican would be good, uh, or gold uh, Cuban. Uh, this would also be very nice, but probably drink that by itself later. We're going to start off with one and a half ounces of this delish 
Bacard. Oro. There was a bit of a tiki pour in there. Uh, a lot of Joe Shalom's cocktails are pretty specific. Uh, so tiki pours, uh, he was not uh, necessarily part of the tiki movement. Uh, he was part of the tropical drinks movement. So a bit different. Uh, the Hilton hotels really didn't build uh, tiki bars. Uh, they built sort of island looking bars. So just a touch different. There is uh, something to that. Uh, as I look into it more and more. Uh, we are going to grab, uh, oh, I uh, decided I was gonna do Demerara rum for this instead. Is that plenty? That's plenty, that's plenty. We're gonna be using this Hamilton Dem. This is the Hamilton Demerara 86. Really, really nice rum. Woof, woof. Holy Lord. It always shocks me. Three quarters of an ounce, guys. So one and a half ounces. One and a half ounces of Bacardi. Uh, gold or any gold Puerto Rican. Try and find the Puerto Rican. They're a little less, I don't want to say a little less flavorful. They're a little less punch in the mouth. They're not going to punch in the mush as hard as the other one. So do find something like that. Uh, and then, um, uh, yeah, and then the, uh, the uh, Hamilton 86. Uh, next thing we're going to be moving into is going to be this apricot. Uh, eau de vie. Eau de vie just means the water of life. Uh, that is another term for brandy. Uh, it's just anything that you uh, actually make the uh, stuff out of. So if you are uh, if you are making a neutral grain and then flavoring it with brandy and sugar, uh, you have yourself a uh, or, uh, with apricot and sugar. You have yourself an apricot liqueur. If you are actually making the liquor out of the brandy or out of the gosh darn it out of the apricot, you got yourself an eau de vie. That's how that works. Uh, we're gonna be putting in a three quarters, sorry, a one half of an ounce of this guy. Nice and easy, c'è molto facile, bello. Perfect. So half an ounce of that. Uh, next thing we're putting in is going to be two ounces of pineapple juice. I hope I have exactly that amount. It's gotta be real close, real close. Two ounces of delish pine. There we go. I have just a touch more. Oh, if you guys are not squeezing your own pineapple juice at the house, you are wrong. You have done the wrong thing. Uh, I do have a question there from Elisa Watanabe. Uh, how did people get a hold of private books when none of his recipes were published? That's a really, really good question, actually, Elisa. Uh, uh, for a long time, uh, bartenders uh, were very, very afraid of uh, their recipes getting out because you cannot trademark a recipe. If I create a recipe, uh, and then another bar finds out how they do that, they throw it on their thing, and if the only reason people are coming to me uh, is because uh, I have created uh, this recipe, uh, and, or because they want this particular drink, and another uh, bar has it, why would they ever come to me? They could go to anybody. So what a lot of bartenders did, ex especially in tiki bars, especially in uh, bars where, uh, where uh, you create a new drink, it gets written up, in the newspapers, it gets written up, uh, you know, when uh, when Joe Shalom created his Suffering Bastard, which is our drink-along drink. Uh, you guys can pop over uh, to uh, see, uh, is it spelled? No, it's, uh, sorry, let me, I'll finish this, Keith, and I'll tell you what it is. Um, uh, so uh, basically what uh, bartenders would do is instead of giving out their recipe to a lot of uh, people, they would either just tell their main guy uh, their main head bartender and then have to pay him a lot to keep his secrets uh, from getting out or uh, Like Don Beach would do he would keep all of his stuff in a notebook that he would write and then uh, what happens is just like in families uh, uh, Joe Shalom had a daughter named Colette uh, and Colette uh, who loved her father very much apparently He was just like the nicest dude of all time uh, when uh, Jeff the beach bum Barry uh, came uh, around looking for uh, stuff. Uh, Colette said, uh, well, you seem like a really sort of nice guy. Uh, my dad's been dead for a while. Uh, and so uh, I'm happy to sort of let you who know, who knows a lot about my dad already sort of look through his uh, notes. So uh, that's really how people find all of this stuff. Um, 
Uh, bartenders are very secretive about their stuff. Uh, they don't want recipes getting out. Uh, I am the exact opposite. I share my recipes uh, freely uh, because I uh, believe that bartending is more than just creating uh, the greatest drinks. Uh, I think there has to be another element. And I believe Joe Shalom also thought that, but when he was working for Conrad Hilton, uh, Conrad was probably very, very worried about all this stuff getting out. We'll get into that in the next cocktail. Uh, but now, uh, oh, and uh, Keith, it is called the Soul E Sombre. So why? Soul and uh, shade. So sun and shade is what it is. Soul E Sombre. Sombra, sombra. S-O-M-B-R-A. Like a sombrero. Uh, but that. Uh, we're going to take a lime uh, peel. So we're going to take a whole lime with the peel on it and the fruit inside of it. We're gonna take the whole friggin' lime. Uh, just half of it though. We're gonna go ahead and give this guy a squeeze uh, right in here to uh, this. We do want to use, this is a uh, this is a Caribbean uh, cocktail, so we do want to hand squeeze all these uh, just like Constantino would. Uh, I don't know, I have no idea what uh, Joe Shalom's thoughts on this are, but uh, since we are uh, here in the Caribbean for this one, uh, squeeze a juice, uh, squeeze the juice of half a lime uh, in there, uh, and you will not regret it. Uh, you'll get all that juice, all that oil, all the rest of that stuff. And then we're going to take our uh, Angostura bitters. This is the BB one, so adorable. Uh, we're going to give this guy a big two dashes. That's it. Not three dashes. Not three dashes. Not one dash. Four right outs. Uh, so there we go. Uh, we have this. Uh, we are going to take some ice now. Uh, about uh, five minutes before uh, this whole thing started, I've had a busy week. Been full of emotions, been full of thoughts and ideas, and uh, just sort of all over the place. Spending a lot of time in a place called Reseda uh, right now. Uh, kind of a cool spot. A lot of, it's crazy, a lot of uh, karate going on up in Reseda. So, a little afraid about uh, getting jumped. <laughs> so I'm learning a little karate myself right now. That's how. That's what I'm doing up in Reseda. Uh, so I have not had a lot of time to uh, examine my stuff. Uh, so I did find out that I was running out of ice. So uh, this ice is not the greatest ice. I'm not going to show you a close up of this ice. It is real ice. Yeah, it's just not that pretty. And you know how I love pretty ice. Let's give this guy a big shake. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> Oh, lovely. It's gurgling, it's schmurgling. Uh, we are gonna serve this one. Now, uh, Joe Shalom would serve his in a baby uh, pineapple. Uh, I guess those are out of season, or I don't know what those, I don't know what the deal with those guys is. Uh, but we are going to serve this in a regular pineapple. We're just going to, oh, hilarious. I told you guys I wasn't gonna show you my ice, but there it is. There it is, there's a big old chunkaroo of ice. Just shove it in there. Just get in there, you little jerks. There we go. Love it. I'm gonna put this back on top. Uh, I do have a, uh, right over here, I do have one. Do I have one? Uh, at one point, I did have some, uh, oh, here they are. This is a big Joe Shalom thing. He loved these little guys. Umbrellas. Who doesn't love a tiki umbrella? We are going to just toss that tiki umbrella right here into the island. Uh, why don't we put it all the way up here like this? So it looks like there's a hurricane blowing. I don't know why this is still on there. Get out of there. There we go. And there we have it. We have our delicious soul y sombra, the sun and the shade. Always do these with a straw. Otherwise, you're going to poke your little eyes out. Let's give this a little taste. Oh, you have no idea how much I needed that. That is delish. Put this off to the side so it's really sticking out. Yeah, there we go. The Sol y Sombra uh, created for the uh, the Caribe, Caribe. I don't know, C-A-R-I-B-E. There might be two B's in there somewhere. Uh, yes, just let Kush get a little tipsy and he'll show you his ice. That is true, Kyle. 
is awesome. Um, so we have uh, this guy uh, right here, the Sol y Sombra. I feel a weird giving this off to Kyle. I feel like this is exactly up Kyle's alley. And I do believe that I will uh, get a very drunk Kyle here uh, any moment. But that's what this is for. We're here to drink. We're here to drink. We're here to have a good time. Uh, here at Kush's Tiki Bar. Uh, so let me pass this off to Kyle. Any questions that you guys have, uh, please uh, just throw them uh, right into that uh, little chat uh, thing. Uh, thank you, Cozy Mom. Cozy Mom, uh, the perpetual birthday girl, uh, thinks this is a beautiful looking cocktail. I couldn't agree more. I think that this is just... I think this is really something. Do you think I could drink the whole thing while I'm vamping? I won't. I'm going to give this to Kyle. Any questions you guys have, uh, let's chat. And uh, we'll keep going. Got two more. Oh, Kyle. There you go, Kai guy. <laughs> Kyle couldn't be more excited. Kyle literally could not be more excited. Okay, yeah, Apostle of Tiki. Apostle of Tiki is liking this one. I do believe that this is right up the Apostle of Tiki's uh, alley uh, as well. I think that is uh, a good a little a cocktail uh, for him. I don't know why. Apostle of Tiki, I imagine you like this cocktail. Cool. All right, well, no questions. Uh, so uh, while I have you guys, uh, just so you know, uh, I love being here with you guys. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, there are going to be some major changes to the channel uh, coming up soon. I will uh, announce exactly what those are later. Uh, so do stick around. I'm trying to create a little suspense. A little, oh my God, what's happening, Kush? Is everything okay? Everything is fine. Just going to have some changes. Uh, so do uh, keep watch for those. Uh, if you guys can, these classes will always remain free, but if you guys can, oh, I always forget it, uh, support the channel uh, either here through my Venmo or uh, head on over to my YouTube. Uh, watch some of my videos. I know I've been a little slow on videos. Uh, like I said, it's been a rough week. Uh, rough week last week, rough, rough week this week. So uh, the only real refuge that I've had, refuge, that I've had is uh, coming to these classes. So uh, thank you guys for showing up. Always, always, always makes me feel better. Cool. Uh, so let us keep it rolling. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. We have more to do. We have more to do. Now this next cocktail is, uh, there is some, there is just a little bit of uh, controversy uh, with this guy. There was a guy named Henry Yi. That dude worked at the uh, the Kaiser Club in uh, Waikiki. Uh, and at the same time, uh, at Conrad Hilton's Caribbean uh, Hotel, uh, our boy, our hero, the hero of our night, Joe Shalom, uh, these guys both, at about the exact same time, created a cocktail called the Tropical Itch. The Tropical Itch. Uh, now, uh, why is that weird? Why is that weird? I don't know. Uh, because sometimes there are uh, people that think the exact same way. Absolutely, why not? Two people can have the exact same idea. It just is a little weird how exactly alike uh, these next uh, cocktails are. Now, I'm going to only be making the one from Joe Shalom. The Henry Yee one actually has some bourbon in it. Uh, this one has no bourbon uh, in this one. Uh, this one instead has uh, a lot of other uh, liquors. But let's just get into it. This is a tropical itch, uh, and the, uh, just so you guys can get ready, uh, the uh, garnish is a back scratcher. Oh my god. Hopefully unused. Kyle, you're getting a used back scratcher, buddy. It's coming to you. It's been, just been used on my hot, sweaty back. Uh, so, congrats, Kyle. You've done it. Uh, let's start this guy. We're going to build this one out of uh, glass, obviously. We don't build uh, big old tiki cocktails in glass. We all know that. We all know that, right? If we don't, here's a reminder. Don't build big cocktails in glass. You'll never get the right, uh, you'll never get the right water uh, appropriation in there. Appropriation is the wrong word. You'll never get the right water levels uh, in there. Uh, let's begin. Uh, we are going to uh, go, uh, reach for a, um, we're going to be reaching for an ingredient that I did not tell you to get. I do feel bad about this, uh, but uh, listen, 
you can switch it out for any other rum. Uh, it's just a light Bacardi. We had the other dark, dark Bacardi. Uh, if you can, buy them in the largest bottles. Ooh, largest bottles of all time. Uh, I recommend it. It does not change the flavor of anything. It does make them uh, a little more huggable. Definitely give this guy a big old hug uh, instead. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, it does make them uh, much cheaper. And, honestly, uh, Bacardi, it's just fine. That should be their slogan. Bacardi, it's just fine. Uh, let's start off uh, over here with uh, how many ounces uh, in this tropical uh, itch? Two. Two full ounces. Now, for those of you who have already tiki poured, you can be in some trouble. Well, there is a lot of whiskey coming, or there's a lot of uh, uh, stuff coming at you uh, here in a momentito. Oh, you know what I don't have at all in here? Oh, that's going to be sad. We're going to have to uh, fake one of them. Uh, well, let's just keep building and we'll go from here. Uh, the next thing we're going to be putting in here is going to be one ounce. One ounce, I say. One ounce of delicious uh, Smith & Cross traditional Jamaican whiskey. Uh, Jamaican rum. Find that Jamaican rum. Uh, it does not have to be Smith and Cross. Smith and Cross. Woo! -wee! That's a lot of spunk. It's a lot, a lot of funk in that guy right there. Wow! Wow! A lot of funk. Your rum is so funky. Why? Why is your rum so funky? I've been doing a Christopher Walken impression for the last four days, and I can't kick out of it. I think it might be terminal. Um. Uh, so we have uh, Smith & Cross. That's going to be one ounce of Smith & Cross rum. Uh, do try and find that. Uh, the one thing that I do not have in this entire uh, bar right now is any kind of... Oh, never mind. I do. I found it. I found it. This was a gift. Uh, this is vodka. Now, Paul knows. My good friend Paul. Paul watches my classes on Friday night uh, at 5 o'clock. Paul is always there. Uh, so I do want to thank Paul. Uh, if you guys are not watching my Friday night classes, I do another class like this with my uh, co-host Tammy Harrison, the Shania Twain of Austria. She likes to say that out loud. She says it out loud to everybody that will listen. She says, she says, Hi Scott, I'm the Shania Twain of Austria. She says it to me like every time we meet each other. Anyway, uh, I do another show like this. You guys should be watching. Find Mix Cocktail Hour on the YouTube. Uh, anyway, the reason I'm talking about it uh, is first of all, you guys should be watching it. It's awesome. Uh, second of all, uh, I did do a lot of vodka yesterday. And for those of you who have taken my classes before, uh, you know that I think uh, vodka is for psychopaths. People that have no feeling or flavor. Uh, that's gonna be one ounce of psycho juice. Vodka. Uh, one ounce. So we do have two ounces of a white rum. We have one ounce of a dark rum. We have one ounce of a vodka in there so far. Next thing we're putting in is we're going to be putting in one full ounce of Cointreau. Ah! I splurged. I got the expensive stuff instead of just going triple sec uh, this time. We're going to see how much that changes. Vodka is for psychopaths. Says Paul again. That is true. Hold on for dear life. Yeah, that's right, Kiki. This is a big one. One full ounce of that. So how many ounces of that so far? How many ounces, what is this? This is 40%. This is 40%. So we have five ounces currently of 40% alcohol. Wow. Wow. The drink so high in ABV. Wow. Yeah, it's terminal. I'm not going to survive this car, this uh, walking impression. Uh, this next thing we're putting in here is going to be some manga. Some mango nectar from Kearns. Now, if you guys could find the series, uh, C-E-R-E-S, uh, they have a uh, they have a mango juice. That's probably a little better. If you're using mango juice, six ounces. If you are rocking this nectar with me, though, four ounces. It's too sweet. It's too sweet at more. So four ounces right there. Yes. Yes, my darling. Uh, next thing we're going to be putting in here is the rest of that lime. Kush has done it. He's used exactly one lime. We won't use lime in the next one. So if you only had one lime and you were nervous, chomping at the bit. Oh my God, Kush. I hope you don't use so much lime. You use lime in every one of your classes and you use it to death. It's the end of the lime. It's the end of the lime, my old friends. We've done it. Tammy does not sound like that. All right, Cozy Mom, you do a Tammy impression then. I think Tammy sounds just like that. Hi, I'm Tammy Harrison, 
And I'm, I'm a singing, I'm a singing lady. I think she sounds just like that. If you guys don't believe me that I do the best Tammy Harrison impression in the whole world, well, you guys can join me every Friday night at 5 o'clock. Mixed Cocktail Hour. Check us out. Uh, this week, uh, we're doing, uh, on Friday, we are doing leftovers and hangovers. So we'll be talking about uh, leftover food, probably bringing in some leftover food, and curing all of the hangovers that people get from their Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, I will probably also be doing a hangover cure a cocktail over here, uh, but I might just go for super strong drinks. That might be what I'm doing on this class. If you guys have any problem with that, uh, let me know and come up with our, we can come up with our own uh, thing that we are doing for, um, for class next week. We're gonna shake this guy. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, before we shake this guy, uh, Joe Shalom was a bartender's bartender. And what do bartender's bartenders put in all of their cocktails? Well, of course. Of course, everybody. <laughs> Angostura. You gotta put Angostura in everything. Two dashes. Not three dashes. Not four dashes. Not one dash. Not five dashes. Two dashes. Get it in there. We don't need this thing to taste like we're licking an Angostura tree. We just need it to taste like there is some in there. Let's go ahead and fill this guy up with ice as much as we possibly can. Oh, this is ridiculous. I'm gonna just crunch a little ice. The ice froze. I'm gonna try this one more time. I think I have better ice back here. There we go. One of my freezers is too cold. There we go, everybody in. Put some more of this guy in here, beautiful. And then we are going to fill up our glass. Uh, if you have a hurricane glass, that is the original way that this was served. I uh, do not have a hurricane glass, uh, so I will be serving this uh, in a monster glass. This is what it looks like. Monster glass. Scary monster glass for you on Instagram. Scary monster glass. Ah! It's all good. Uh, go ahead and just fill this guy up. Uh, we are going to be using some of this snow ice. Uh, to create a little depth, a little thickness to our cocktail. Let's go ahead and give this guy a big, uh, fat shake. Give this a big, fat shake. We want this thing to go really, really go. Really, really shake up. So one, two, oh, one, two, three, four. Go ahead and strain this right into your glass on top of fresh ice. That's what we're looking for. Slow fade, ooh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Look at all of that booze. That is mostly booze, folks. Never called you guys folks before. Hope everybody's all right with that. I did it without your permission, without your consent, but I just folks you. So now you guys are my folks. Uh, this is uh, the Tropical Itch, but you cannot have the Tropical Itch without scratch stick. Just go ahead and put that right in there. <laughs> it's just the silliest, the silliest thing that's ever been sung. I'm just going to put it on the side, Kyle. Uh, I, I really have been having a good time scratching my back with this thing. Really would prefer that this thing was not just completely full of tropical itch juice for the rest of its life. So, uh, Kyle, uh, when you come in here, I'm just gonna hand you this. I do want you to keep it near the drink, though. I do want you to keep it uh, in the drink. Oh, uh, thank you, uh, Unibabe, uh, over on the uh, YouTube. Really, really digging uh, the music. I have some music over there. If you guys uh, just really are not that into me, uh, but for some reason have a, a weird addiction, sort of like my uh, Christopher Walken situation going on, uh, and do want uh, to uh, just listen to some nice calm music. Uh, just tune me out. Nice calm music underneath what's going on. Uh, so I'm gonna have this off uh, to uh, Mr. Kyle. I'm gonna uh, garnish this with spent limes. Little trash tiki that we got going on. Uh, so this does end up looking like this uh, and that the stick is going there. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, please uh, get at me. Uh, either on YouTube or the Instagram. I'll find you. I'm gonna hand this off to uh, Kyle real quick. Oh, I didn't even taste it. 
Holy crap. Oh, that is Donjaru, my friend. Let's see if it works. Oh, heaven. I'm in heaven when I scratch my back and drink. Okay, I'm gonna hand this off real quick. I'll be right back. Any questions, let me know. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we'll just keep drinking after this. Here we go, Kyle. I don't know if you guys on YouTube can hear, uh, but Kyle just purred at me like he was Chewbacca. Uh, so, Kyle really working on that voice of his. He's so manly with the chest hair and all that stuff. Let's see. Uh, there's enough booze in it to sanitize the back scratcher. That is correct, Uni Babe. Uh, that will definitely, definitely, definitely sanitize uh, your back scratcher. Uh, I noticed that uh, our good friend Kate Rocheron. Uh, just jumped uh, on to the uh, Instagram and probably has no idea why that sentence uh, makes sense. Uh, same thing with everybody else that just jumped on. Uh, if you did just jump on, we just made a drink called the Tropical Itch. Five ounces of booze, a touch of mango, uh, and the garnish was a back scratcher. I did a scratch my back uh, with uh, the back scratcher. And now my good friend Kyle is in the other room uh, drinking it. Uh, Kyle, very manly. Very, very manly. Like, there's just not a, not a lot of dudes out there that have all of Kyle's uh, stuff. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, John, uh, over on the YouTube, uh, is letting me know that Kyle will probably get hammered. That's probably true. Uh, we are going to make one more cocktail, and if Kyle does not show up, uh, we know that Kyle... Drinky, drinky. Drinky, 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 drinky. Um, so, uh, after... My good friend Joe Shalom, who helped, uh, who helped uh, Montgomery uh, defeat Rommel in World War II uh, by sending up a hangover cure called the Suffering Bastard. Suffering Bastard uh, was our drink along drink. If you guys want to know how to make that, uh, we are not making that today. Uh, that is the most famous of Joe Shalom's uh, cocktails, probably one of the most famous cocktails uh, in the world uh, in the 1930s, 1940s, and 1950s. Um, uh, so we won't be making that one. Uh, everybody can make that one. Um, um, after that, he was exiled from uh, Egypt. He left his fortune of around $500,000 in those days money. So we're talking millions of dollars. He never saw it again. Apparently, uh, bartending in North Africa uh, at the time, uh, tipping really big thing. People would tip him often uh, times uh, 400 pounds or uh, they would just take their ring off, uh, hand it to him. Uh, he even had a ploy where uh, every year he would uh, bartend for this uh, king uh, and the king would only drink his drinks in gold cups and then afterwards toss those cups into the river. Uh, Joe Shalom uh, after the first year decided he would put a net in that river uh, and then he collected all the gold cups. Uh, that uh, leader was eventually deposed that's how that happens. Uh, anyway, uh, he was caught for being a spy. Uh, Joe Shalom was, was accused of being a spy, thrown right out uh, without any of his money. Uh, and then uh, uh, Hilton, Conrad Hilton found him, moved him down to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, hanging out, uh, eventually got to Cuba. Well, uh, what happened to Cuba? Uh, they had some rough times going on there too. So uh, he was accused of being a spy a second time. A second time, his poor family, uh, Colette and his wife, I don't know his wife's name, but Colette was a, Colette's a big uh, old hero. Um, anyway, they had to move and they moved all over the world from there uh, and eventually landed in a place called Rome, uh, in a place called Rome. Now, I asked you guys to get a fairly specific uh, ingredient for this one. It's called Tia Maria. It means Aunt Maria. Uh, I did not get that. I just, I wasn't into it. Uh, you know, Kush Thunder doesn't tell me what to do. I tell Kushtender what to do. That's how that works. So uh, we are not going to be using uh, Tia Maria. Uh, we are instead going to be using coffee liqueur. So if you do have a coffee liqueur ready to go, uh, get it going. If I was, uh, if I have ever given you one of my coffee liqueurs, uh, well, you are lucky. I don't do that often. So uh, you can also use that. Uh, but we do want to add just a touch of vanilla uh, to make this coffee liqueur uh, into a more Tia Maria tasting uh, situation. Uh, Tia Maria just has a little bit more vanilla than most coffee liqueurs. So uh, get your stuff. Uh, ready. Your grams, no, uh, yeah. Whatever. 
Okay, uh, so let's uh, begin uh, to build uh, this cocktail. While he was living in Rome, uh, he needed to continuously make up cocktails that were uh, going to uh, sort of spread all over the world. So he did make a Remus and Romulus uh, cocktail. Uh, two different cocktails uh, in uh, two different glasses. Oh, we won't be making that one today. Instead, we're going to be doing something a little different called the Roman Twist. Uh, the Roman Twist. It sounded really good, uh, sort of in the vein of a uh, Mr. Bally High uh, or a Black Magic, which we have made both of those on this uh, show, on this, uh, on these classes. So, uh, if you're into that, uh, if you like those drinks, you'll like this one uh, equally. Uh, let's go ahead and grab this. We are going to be, of course, building this one. Where? Tim. Away from your glass. Get that glass out of here. Uh, we are going to be uh, using a bourbon today. And the bourbon we're doing, I just got re-upped by my good friend Mike and his brother Justin at Hartman's, uh, Hartman's, what are they calling it? Hartman's Distilling Company uh, out of a wonderful, wonderful town called uh, Buffalo. Anybody been to Buffalo? Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is Hartman. Uh, this is the Hartman's Distilling Company. If you guys can ever get your hands on something like this, it'll be great. The moment that they're selling it uh, here in uh, in Los Angeles or anywhere on the West Coast, I will let everybody know. Uh, this is something, this is a really, really nice whiskey. Not just because he was my old college roommate. I was prepared to tell him that it was garbage. Uh, I just couldn't do it. It's so, so delicious. Let's begin. We're gonna be doing in a 1.25 ounces. What a jerk. That's how. That's what this recipe calls for. So we do need two different jiggers for that. Is that uh, blocking? Yeah, it's blocking. Get this out of here. There we go. We're gonna be doing one ounce in this one ounce thing, and then we gotta find our .25 ounce jigger. That's this guy. That is just right here. It is important that we follow Joe Shalom's steps. Uh, Joe was a chemist and was not uh, just a lottie dotty bartender pouring stuff on the ground, pouring stuff all over. That is not Joe's game. Uh, this is instead uh, uh, something else. So, uh, Apostle Tiki says, where can you find Hartman's? Uh, currently, uh, Apostle Tiki, you can only find it in Buffalo uh, or at uh, Kush's Tiki Bar. They do not have any distribution uh, currently. They are doing very well, but they are uh, sort of a small company. The moment that we uh, that they get distribution, though, I will let everybody know. I am not kidding. I am very lucky that, uh, that I have talented friends uh, that are able to make good stuff like this. It really, really is the best bourbon I've ever tried. We do also sell it at the Queensberry, assuming that the Queensberry uh, opens back up. Uh, I think it will, but we, uh, for the time being, we don't know what's happening. Uh, so uh, that's where you can find it uh, in the world. Uh, next thing we're gonna be putting in is some coffee liqueur. Coffee liqueur, we're gonna be doing hearing. Uh, Mr. Black is a little stronger if you have Mr. Black, a uh, very nice. Uh, but it's a little more coffee oriented. Uh, I would put just a touch of simple syrup just to sort of sweeten this bad boy out. Uh, Mr. Black, uh, just a little tough. A little tougher than uh, the coffee hearing from Tia Maria. Uh, next thing we are going to be putting in here, uh, since we are not, if you're not using, if you are using Tia Maria, if you went out and followed my instructions uh, to a T, uh, you're done. But if you're using any other kind of uh, uh, coffee liqueur, uh, you are going to want to find some of this stuff. This is just pure vanilla. Oh, we're just going to put a baby dash of this stuff in here. I'm talking the smallest possible amount. Uh, you, you know, this is a cap. Uh, I didn't even fill up the floor of the cap. That's how, that's how little we're looking. We just need to... I just need to get that going, you know? We just need a little bit of vanilla in there. That's uh, important to us. Next thing we're gonna putting in here is going to be lemon. Lemon, because she said no more citrus. I did not say no more citrus. I didn't say that, and don't misquote me. I said no more lime. So let's go ahead and do one full ounce of this lemon juice. Oh, uh, yeah, lemons have, li lemons have uh, seeds, uh, so we don't squeeze lemons by hand. We should all know that. I should know that before I start doing that. Squeeze that lemon. Yo. I'm watching a really funny uh, series on uh, YouTube. There's only one episode out right now, but it's called Sassy Justice. Um, it's by the same guys that do South Park. And then a guy named Peter Cernovich. Peter Cernovich is a, uh, an impressionist. Uh, you guys should watch it. Uh, let me know what you think. Spectacular. Uh, do you know how to tie a bow? Uh, I do know how to tie a bow. 
I do not have a typo, uh, but I was going for the classy look. Um, uh, thank you for uh, pointing that out, uh, Grant. Uh, Grant Cushman, who, uh, this is the Grant Cushman Memorial Tool Cam. Uh, he's still alive, he's clearly commenting on it. Uh, yes, I do know how to tie a tie, um, uh, but my big fat neck uh, will not let this button uh, button right now. Uh, and it does, a, a tie tie does not look good with a button, uh, but it's really not that hard to tie a tie. Uh, well, maybe we'll do a whole class on that one time because I don't know you guys can probably just read these recipes somewhere and then I can teach you something useful uh, There we go. Oh, we have uh, the juice of one lemon. So one full uh, lemon. Uh, we then need oh dang. Oh dang. Oh dang. Uh, I do have orange juice in here Just give this a quick smell. Oh Yeah, fresh squeezed orange juice We're gonna be looking for I don't know one ounce. Let's do one ounce. One ounce of fresh squeezed orange juice. Perfect. And last thing we're gonna be putting in here. He did not uh, find a way to slip any Angostura in here. Kind of odd. The uh, last thing we're putting in here is going to be uh, some of this stuff. Everybody take a guess at what this is. It's our job. A big head, big neck, can't lose. Yeah, that is a very, very true thing. I have the uh, largest neck of anybody that wears normal shirts. I have to get some shirts custom made, uh, or else I have to have, they have extender buttons, uh, because for some reason I was granted the largest neck of all time. I have a big old rough neck. Uh, oh, we're talking about that. Uh, let's go ahead and put one full ounce of Orjat. Orjat, very simple to make. It is two parts sugar, one part uh, almond milk, uh, you are then going to put just a touch of uh, um, almond uh, extract, some uh, orange uh, flower water, and some rose water. That is that. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and give this guy the last shake of the night. We're coming up on it. This is, let's use all of this ice so that I can make more ice tomorrow. And I will not have this blunder ever again where I have no ice hanging out. How much coffee liqueur, uh, Keith asks. Keith, we're doing one ounce of the coffee liqueur. So it is, let's go over this one more time. It is 1.25 ounces of bourbon. It is one ounce of lemon, one ounce of orange juice, one ounce of coffee liqueur, one ounce of orgeats. Kind of a simple, interesting cocktail. A lot of different flavors. I have never made this before. So excited to see how it turns out. Uh, it is served if you guys have something like this right here. Boop. This is a tall glass. Mine has designs on it. You don't have to have one with designs on it. It's just the cocktail won't taste as good. So let's give this one a big fat shake. We do want to break this up. We do want to use the ice in here as our thing. So one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Five, 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 five. smells weird, man. Go ahead and pour this guy into the thing. Boy, that comes out in a very odd color. Huh. Oh my god, it's good. Yowza. Okay. It's nice. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and find a straw. Put the straw in here. I'm gonna decorate this with just a bit of mint. just so we get a little mint flavor, a little mint smell uh, on there. We're gonna go with trash tiki and we are going to uh, decorate with a little lemon hat. So now we have a lemon hat with a little mint sticking out. Pretty cute. Uh, this drink is called the Roman Twist. Now I don't know why it is called the Roman Twist, but I do assume that the Tia Maria uh, plays a part in it. Uh, it does have a lot of, uh, There's if you've ever been to Rome, uh, those dudes love coffee. That is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a fan. I like the Roman twist. I'm glad I picked this one. There was a couple other ones that I was going to go with. Uh, I've already mentioned the M1. But I said to go with this one instead. Um, Alright. Well, hopefully you guys made that. Anybody make it? 
Yeah? No? Not yet? Sorry. Uh, well, if you have made it, let me know what you think about it. Uh, I'm going to pass this off to Kyle. Then we're going to talk about what we're doing next week. Next week is going to be the day after Thanksgiving. So if you guys do want to do hangover cocktails as well, I'm doing a hangover class uh, over uh, on uh, Friday, 5 o'clock, live, a mixed cocktail hour. Check that, check that out. Um, uh, but we could do strong drinks uh, or we could do something else. Uh, yeah, excellent drink, right, Paul? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand this off to Kyle. Let's talk here in a second, guys. One, two, three. Kyle! Mm. That was pretty gosh darn good. Ooh, I have a lot of booze left over. Uh, so, uh, let's talk real quick, guys. Uh, like I say every week, these classes will always, always, always remain free. Uh, I will keep doing them uh, until uh, nobody shows up uh, ever, and even then I will probably just talk my way through making cocktails with a camera pointed at me. Uh, but uh, if you guys can support the channel, uh, please uh, try and help out uh, over here, uh, Venmo, uh, at uh, Kush Tender, or on my YouTube page, uh, you can buy me a shot at paypal.me slash Kush Tender. That is always helpful. Uh, my good friend John buys me a shot every week. It's always, always nice to catch up with my friend John, so um, uh, that's nice. If you can't, and I totally understand, I mean, I have resorted uh, to buying uh, the large bottles of Bacardi uh, because uh, my shame uh, is uh, of walking out of there with, with uh, handles of Bacardi uh, outweighs the fact that uh, it is tough to make money uh, in these times. So if you are also with me, uh, that's fine. Uh, but if you do have a couple minutes left on your uh, day, uh, left at the end of your day, uh, you can pop over to my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Cushtender, C-U-S-H-T-E-N-D-E-R. Watch some of my videos, like, subscribe, comment, share. Uh, just be like, hey, uh, you might like this drink. Uncle Johnny, send Uncle Johnny your thing. I don't, I don't know how sharing works. Uh, just try it. Uh, pop up, yeah, pop up there uh, and do that. Uh, so uh, yeah, guys, I uh, I will come up with a, a cocktail class uh, for next week uh, that will be uh, uh, good. I don't know. I thought this one was okay. The last one. Oh, last one. Winner of the night says Paul, and Paul uh, I believe is uh, one of the only people that definitely makes all of them. Uh, so Paul says last one's the winner of the night. I'm going with the tropical itch. Um, Tropical Gitch was, I, I thought it had a really nice level of salt uh, to it. Uh, I know salt wasn't the, uh, uh, wasn't a, uh, necessarily an ingredient, but I was sweating and then I put that in there. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's that guys. Um, yeah, next week we will do, most likely we will do some sort of a hangover cocktail situation or, uh, uh you know what? Maybe we'll just do vodka. I don't know. I don't know what I'm up to. I've, I'm on a vodka kick recently. Uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, get at me if you guys have a better suggestion uh, for it. Uh, I would love to hear it. Uh, you can always DM me uh, over on my uh, Instagram. You Instagram people know what I'm talking about. Uh, you YouTube people. I think you can also get at me there. I don't know. Uh, at this point, I'm just rambling, just trying to do this with time. Uh, so I uh, thank you guys so much for coming out. I uh, uh, I always love doing this, even in the midst of a uh, rough couple weeks. Uh, I love uh, coming together uh, at Kush's Tiki Bar uh, to talk drinks with you guys, uh, and I love that you guys show up every week. Uh, thank you uh, so very much. It keeps uh, me happy. It gives me something to look forward to every week. Uh, you guys are uh, the real heroes. These are the real heroes. So uh, thanks for coming out. And I will uh, see you guys all uh, next week. Oh, Paul says no more vodka. That was Paul, no. Paul with all of his feelings, all of his emotions. Paul's not a psychopath. That's probably true. Paul's not a psychopath. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys so much. And I will see you guys uh, on the next uh, possible Saturday, the closest possible Saturday to this Saturday uh, will be the next Saturday, and that's the Saturday I'll see you guys. So, uh, thank you guys so much, and uh, good luck out there. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, stay safe. Wear your uh, wear your stinking masks. Oh, there it is. Wear your masks. And that says.
Okay, guys. Uh, bye.